Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody. Today we will have a look at an encrypted book or a partially encrypted book. And in that book there is a description of a holy magic machine. My good friend and colleague George Lazary made me aware of this really nice and interesting book. And I thought it would be interesting to show it to you, the viewers of this channel. We structured this video into four different parts. In the first part, we will have a look at the aforementioned book, the alchemy book Das Zweite Silentium Dei in Königs Salomones des Weisen Paradisischen Lustgarten. As you can see, it's a German book. In the second part, we will have a look at the ciphertext and the holy machine, which you can see here on the right side, both. Then we will perform a small analysis of the ciphertext and we will see a decipherment of the book. And finally, we will decipher the ciphertext in Cryptool 2. The alchemy book Das Zweite Silentium Dei in Königs Salomonis des Weisen Paradiesischen Lustgarten or the English title The Second Silentium Dei in King Salomon's Paradisian Pleasure Garden is an encrypted alchemy book from the 60s and 70s century. And the book that I present here is a handwritten alchemy book from 1798, and it's probably a copy of the original book. And the content of this book is attributed to Johann Arndt, a German Lutheran theologian from the 16th and 17th century. You can see a nice picture from Wikipedia of Johann Arndt here. He lived from 5055 to 1621. And the current location and owner of the book is the Beinecke Rare Book and Manuscripts Library of the Yale University Library. You may know this library because another very famous completely encrypted book is located in that library, and that is the Voynich Manuscript. The Voynich Manuscript, as I said, is a completely encrypted book. We don't know the solution to that. And maybe in the future I will also make a video about this. But in this video we will have a look at the Zweite Silentium Dei. And the book contains several smaller sections and one bigger section written in cipher. And that makes this book particularly interesting for us. In that book, on page 21, you can find a very nice drawing of the holy secret machine. And the machine, to me, it's not really a machine, but the author of the book says this is a machine. And this looks like some binoculars, but in a reversed order. So you have the sun here, the light goes through this binocular here, and it heats some chemical construction or components to heat some chemicals. And you have some other alchemy things. I don't know what this is. Glass, th glass things. Here you have uh, glasses. And these are also shown on page 21. But for us, the interesting part is page 24. And here you see Beschreibung der magischen Maschine. That means description of the magic machine. And here we have this nice ciphertext written in some kind of Masonic or Pigpen-like cipher. And my good friend and colleague George Lesry created a nice transcription of this ciphertext and provided it to me. And here you can see that he assigned two digits to each of the ciphertext symbols. And you can see also that we have some Latin letters inside the ciphertext and he also assigned Latin uh, letters to that original Latin letters. And his tool created, or he used his tool to create this nice transcription here. On the left side, you can see how he transcribed all the symbols beginning from 01 to 24 or 25. This list goes on a little. This is only one part of the transcribed original ciphertext. Here you can see also the transcription George Lesry created. And as I said, it consists of two digit numbers. And I marked in red some specialities of that ciphertext. So you have these Latin letters inside the ciphertext like A, B, C, O, 
E, F, D, C, and so on. And then you have these digits or numbers in brackets. And these digits or numbers are actually written as numbers in the ciphertext. So they are, you can say, not encrypted, or they seem to be not encrypted. Maybe these numbers stand for something different, but in the ciphertext you can see these also as numbers. Now let's perform a small analysis and a decipherment of the aforementioned or shown ciphertext. And at first I have to tell you that this ciphertext, of course, already was encrypted by previous work, and I found a very interesting work dealing with that um, ciphertext and with that book. And if you're interested in that, here's the link. I will post this link also below the video. And this work is a PDF or a book that you can find online. It's called Alchemical Catopricks, Light Matter and Methodologies of Transformation in Moving Image Practice. And it's written by Ashrovan. As I said, I will put the link below this video. And here on the right side, you can see the original key. And the funny thing is that this key is also part of the book. So on page 83, you see this key here. So you have to go through the book. Remember that the um, cipher text was on page 24, but then on page 83, you can see this key here. And with respect to our ciphertext. The ciphertext contains 76 different ciphertext symbols, but in these symbols are also the Latin letters and the non-encrypted digits included. Then the ciphertext I've just shown you consists of 715 symbols in total. And the cipher encrypts single letters like A, B, C, D, you can see this here. It encrypts double letters like AE, OE, UI, and CH. You can see these here on the right side. And it also encrypts higher order engrams like SCH, which is very common in German, or LICH, which is also very common in German. And of course, and finally, it encrypts the word UND, which means AND. There's another interesting uh, peculiarity with this cipher that I have already told you, and that is the handling of numbers and digits. And there's something I didn't tell you, and that is that there are two ways of handling numbers or digits in this cipher. Numbers can either be written as clear text, so when you have 123, you have the 123 also in the cipher text not encrypted, or it can be written as uppercase letters with dots A, B, C. You can see this here, you can find this on page 87 in that book. We have A is one dot, B is two dot, C is three dot, and so on. And this is the meaning of the Latin letters in our ciphertext. And this also fits to the numbering in the image from the beginning. So we had the image with the components of the machine, and these components have numbers. And when you decipher the cipher text and you use this table here to decipher the Latin letters, then these numbers correspond to in the cipher text to the numbers shown in the picture or in the image. So these numbers fit. And in the following now we will have a look at the decryption of our cipher text. And the decryption is also based on the aforementioned book. And here you can see the German plaintext, but in a minute we will have a look at the English one. As you can see, this looks like an enumeration. You have these, always this NO here for number, and then you have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and so on. And to be honest, I think that the ones writing this book here, they I don't know why they didn't change the Latin letters to digits, but as I said, I tested it and the numbers or the digits, when you replace the Latin letters with these numbers, these perfectly fit to the described machine. Now let's have a look at the description of the machine or the English plain text. And here you can see, number one, the sign of the sun. I think this is not, these two parts are not encrypted. And here we have the encrypted or now decrypted part. So number A, B, and C show the convex burning glasses, the first of which indicated by letter M is six or 12 inches. And these numbers are actually not encrypted. So you have these in clear text in the book 
inside the cipher text. Inches in circumference. The second indicated by letter O is 12 or 14, and the third indicated by letter Q is 16 or 18 inches. These must be places equidistantly so that one focus can reach the other right in the center. So I think this is the description how to construct this binocular. And now you have a description of all the other parts of the image that we have seen. So number D is where the mercury is placed, number E is the rising of the spirit of mercury, number F is the glass globe filled, and so on and so forth. For me, the interesting part was, and as um, you know, <laughs> I can of course understand the German text, and here the last sentence or the last part in that description or enumeration that describes the machine is S are the Iranian, I don't know what this is, the goggles with green lenses that make it possible to work with precious stones. And when we go back to the picture or the figure of our machine, we can actually see here number 18 and these are the goggles, the glasses. And as I said, you have here the number 18, this, this here are green glasses, and when we go back to the English um, translated plain text, we see here number S, and the S is, when we go back here, the 18. So this perfectly fits, as I have already said, when we decipher or um, substitute our letters, the plain text letters in the cipher text by these numbers, then we see that all these numbers actually, or these um, Latin letters are actually numbers, and this fits perfectly. And here's in, in the English, of course, the same. Now that we know how the cipher text uh, has been encrypted, we know the cipher, we have uh, had a brief look at the plain text. I thought it would be also nice to have a look at the cipher text. Uh, we use the transcription that George Leslie provided and we try to decipher it in CT2. To be honest, I already did this, of course, for fun. And you will see that I can partially decrypt the cipher text. I didn't go too far to implement or to add all the cipher text letters to the key, but I will provide the um, transcription below this video or a link to the transcription. And then if you want, you could also play a little with that cipher text and deciphering the cipher. So let's go to Cryptool 2. I'm here now in the start center of Cryptool 2 and I created a workspace for deciphering our cipher. And I will just open that workspace. It's on my desktop, the decryption CVM file. And this workspace here is based on, I think, the nomenclature workspace that we have stored in Cryptool 2. So when you want to create such workspace on your own, you could search for nomenclature. Then you have here nomenclature decryption. And I adapted that workspace to the cipher that we have here. So what do we have here? Here we have a text input. And here inside the text input, I put the transcription that George Leslie provided. What I also did, I added spaces here at the beginning, since I set the component to separate um, the input, this is a cipher text, using space symbols. And I also did the same for the output. So the substitution component will take um, this cipher text here and it will split it according to the spaces. And that's why I added also a space at the beginning here just to be sure that it doesn't merge the last and uh, the last two digits and the first two digits of the next line. Then we have here our key. And our key consists of um, two sides. You have the plain text side on the left and you have the cipher text side on the right. And our cipher text here consists of um, two digits. I'm not sure if you can see this. Probably I have to put this a little to the right, this also, that you can see this. Could be that I'm here in the way. <laughs> I don't know. I cannot see myself right now. Okay, as I said, you have on the left side the plain text letters. You have on the right side the ciphertext symbols, in our case, two-digit um, numbers. And I use the original key from the book. I 
it's to be honest a little difficult to see or to really um, understand which symbol are depicted uh, in the um, image because the image quality of the scan is not the best and some of the symbols are really hard to um, recognize. Here you can see our Latin um, letters, our Latin alphabet from A to Z. What I also did, I uh, merged the V and the U since in with this old text you usually don't have V and U, you only have one of those. And here in the middle, you have the bigrams. You have the CH, which is a symbol with the number 29, the CK, which is the number 23, the LL, and so on. Then you have, you have here the SCH with 31, and so on. And these digits, as I said, were um, assigned by George Leslie to our ciphertext symbols. And when we now press play, and I think we have to uh, decrease the size a little here. Yes, now it's correct. Then when we press play, the substitution component takes the ciphertext. These two components are just uh, CSV reader components. The first component takes the first column. So this is a comma separated value file, you can say. And the second component takes the second column. And then it inputs these here and is in the format that the substitution component understands. And when you want to change something here, for instance, let's change the A to a triple A. Then you can see here in our text that we have triple A. So, and I went back and forth between the book, George Lesry's transcription, and my Crypt2 workspace to create that key. And yet, as you can see here, number one, two, three, zeigen die hohlgeschliffene Gläser. So, number one, two, and three show the hollow, um, I don't know what the <laughs> word in English is, the hollow made um, glasses, and, and so on and so forth. And here you can also see the non-encrypted um, numbers in the text. And then what I did for fun, I copied this text out and I tried to merge the words, add separators between, like spaces between the words, added line breaks and so on. Yeah, and what you could do, you could download the text, download the key. I think I will provide both. And then you could try to play a little with this. Of course, we could now also use this just for fun. <laughs> to create our own um, message. I just enter here, hello world, in the ciphertext component here. It's just a text input. And when we change this here from encrypt to decrypt, uh, from decrypt to encrypt, I think. No, that was wrong. We have to change it. <laughs> it's funny, it's decrypt here. That's why these inputs, when we, when we change the inputs, then it's correct, I think. So this one goes here and this one goes here. Now we change the ciphertext and plaintext alphabets that they are correct now. And now it should be encrypt. Uh, this is source destination. Did I do it again in the wrong direction? So this has to be here. This has to be here. Encrypt. Hello world. We have source alphabet A. Ah, I'm s <laughs> okay. I have. To, I don't have um, separate. I, I have here these input separators. And I have to remove the input separator because now it separates this here as one cipher text, uh, plain text symbol and this as one. But when you remove the space here as input separator, now it should work, yeah. And as you can see here now, we have H is 17, E is zero uh, one, L, L. It can actually encrypt LL because we have LL in our um, cipher here, 15. Then we have the O, the 7. And as you can see, we don't have a W here, but we could just replace it by two Vs. And we, we also don't have two Vs, but actually the two Vs are also the U here. So uh, the U is a V. So when we add this pipe symbol here, we can say, okay, I want to have the V. As, uh, and the U also as these numbers. And the nice thing with this component is we have U and V, 13 and 12. So it first chose 13 for encryption and then 12. And then we can just write, this is a test of the cipher from the book. 
and we can actually use the original <laughs> cipher from the book. Okay, we don't have the original symbols, that's clear, but we can use the transcribed numbers here to create cy the same cipher as with the book. Yeah, and I think that this book cipher was really interesting, a magical machine. I don't know what is magical with binoculars, but um, yeah, <laughs> probably in the 16th century that was magic <laughs> for the people there. And um, actually the alchemical book uh, was partially encrypted, probably to hinder other people finding the notes of that um, alchemist to reconstruct um, things that he invented or built without knowing the key. But then I don't know why they put the key into the book. Then I would have kept the key at least secret. But <laughs> nevertheless, that is a really interesting alchemy book with really interesting th ciphers. And it uh, was a lot of fun to play a little with Cryptool 2 on it to read the story of the book. And uh, yeah, that's everything I wanted to show you in this short video. So you can use Crypto 2 to also decipher alchemical ciphers. And um, yeah, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Also, if you did not yet subscribe to this channel, I would be really happy if you do so. I think in the future we will have more, hopefully more ciphers like this. I think these are quite interesting. Yeah, and um, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.